Okay, we are live here on the Cinco de Mayo edition of the e-commerce aholic live stream. Uh, I'm getting some signals from YouTube that my bit rate is not fantastic for this. Um, if you guys let me know if the quality is not good enough on YouTube, if they're skipping or anything like that, just let me know and I will stop the stream, see what I can do to fix it uh, and, and get it back up. The video quality looks fine for me, so hopefully it is good for all of you out there as well. But again, if it happens to not be, let me know and I will do all I can to, to stop this um, live stream and, and fix that issue. Uh, so the Cinco de Mayo edition, we're going to have some margaritas here today. First time I've had uh, margaritas on the live stream. I feel like I should hide the picture so y'all won't know how many of these I go through uh, throughout the course of this, of this particular live stream. But I've got an interesting topic. Uh, I was at Adobe Summit just a few short weeks ago and they surprised us all with the announcement of Adobe Commerce Cloud. And it was a lot of shock, you know, they, they did some crazy things to the uh, Magento logo and we were just, you know, kind of concerned with what does this mean? You know, come, changes are not to be unexpected after an acquisition and we figured that Adobe was going to do some stuff to address uh, the higher end market, but it still came as a shock. So as I always do, I try to go straight to the source to get you all answers on any questions that you may have. And what better source than to go straight to Adobe, Magento, Adobe, like I don't even know what to call it now when, when you go to the source. Um, maybe we'll get some clarification. That may be one of my, my first questions off the bat. But uh, you know, I, I wanna thank Adobe and, and Peter Sheldon's gonna come on here and answer questions for us. And they don't have to do this. They don't have to provide this level of transparency. So it's great that they're willing to do it. So um, as I've already mentioned today, my guest is Peter Sheldon, Senior Director of Strategy at Magento. Peter, thanks for being on the show. And, and if you would just kind of, you know, tell us a little bit about your role that there at Magento, is it is it at Magento, is it at Adobe? And give us some insight as to the day-to-day -day responsibilities for a senior director of strategy. Great, hey, well, TJ, thanks for thanks for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, look, looking forward to doing this. Um, so yeah, uh, what my role at Magento. So, you know, I've been at Magento for three and a half years. I joined um, just as we spun out from, from eBay and, you know, worked, uh, you know, alongside, uh, you know, Mark Lavelle and, and, and Jason Woosley and the whole team for, you know, the, the, the past three and a half years. Um, you know, my role as a senior director of strategy really, um, what I'm primarily involved in is trying to sort of look ahead. Um, I don't have a, a crystal ball, but if I did have, I, I'd be looking into this and, and seeing where where does the platform need to be five years from now to make sure that we're still relevant in the market and we're still market leader. Um, so it's really about what are the investments that we need to be making or considering making today to make sure that Magento continues to thrive in the ecosystem. Um, so at the heart, that, that's what I do. Um, you know, if we kind of peel back the layers a, a little bit, you know, there's all kinds of things I get involved with. Um, uh, you know, so certainly working very closely with, you know, my, my peers in product management, you know, thinking about uh, strategic partnerships that we uh, that we have in place thinking about um you know acquisitions that we've done you know as you know we, we bought uh, you know bluetooth and, and other things uh you know we, we acquired rj metrics um and those have all been you know really really uh uh you know critical to to the growth of magento um so, so and then you know thinking very carefully about you know the the really sort of big game-changing innovations that we we need to be investing in now you know things that we've done in the past like uh, magento cloud um like like pw WA Studio. Those are all projects that, you know, I, I led and was, was heavily involved in. And then, you know, there's all kinds of other things that, you know, I, I have sort of oversight with. Um, you know, I, I spend a lot of time with the uh, the industry analysts. For those of you who know me, I, I used to be an analyst at, at Forrester, so I spend a lot of time, you know, making sure that uh, industry analysts, you know, know and understand who Magento is, what we do. Um, obviously, those rankings in the, the Gartner Magic Quadrant, the Forrester Waves, are, you know, very important to us they're very important to our partners so making sure that you know 
we put a lot of focus on that. Um, you know, I, I run competitive intelligence, so you know, understanding you know who are you know what our competitors are doing, what we need to do, what we need to be doing to make sure that we stay ahead of them. Um, pricing strategy, uh, you know, positioning. There's a lot of things that uh, that, that I'm involved in. All right. So if we want to know where the platform's going, it sounds yeah. like you're definitely the guy for that. I'm definitely one of the guys to come to for sure. <laughs> and I, I think we are all guilty of calling it Bluetooth at one point or another. I, yeah, I believe I we were. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, most people that's watching this live stream probably know what Magento is, but you know, you never can tell who's going to stumble across this. So I, I want to, I want to make sure you know we kind of define terms on here. So if you would. Give everyone kind of the elevator pitch on the Magento e-commerce platform. Yeah, so so Magento is um, really sort of you know global leader in terms of being um, you know one of the most adopted and widely used e-commerce platforms um, around the globe. Uh, you know, I think what differentiates Magento is. First of all, um, you know, first and foremost, the, the size of the ecosystem. We have this unprecedented ecosystem of technology partners, system integrators, uh, you know, our, our customers, uh, developers who really sort of you know guide us forward. Uh, it's it's more than just Magento and, and Adobe being sort of the custodians of the platform, um, but but we have this very very unique ecosystem that you know numbers uh, you know close to sort of three hundred thousand uh, you, you know individuals uh, that. You know, are you know have a very very vested interest in making sure that Magento is not just successful in the market, but you know is you know continues to be successful. And so we see great uh, you know innovation and contributions coming from from that ecosystem. And, and so you know Magento, I think you know kind of a few of the core differentiators for our platform is really just the sort of the versatility and, and flexibility of the platform. You know, whether it's the the extensions that are built by our partners, um, you know, the, the the time to market, just the, the flexibility. I mean, I think, you know, internally at Magento, you know, we're always amazed that the, 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 sheer diversity of clients that we have you know there, there is not an industry that's not using Magento whether it's you know from automotive to agriculture to you know obviously online retailers CPG firms um, you know we, we we continue to be uh, you know amazed on almost a weekly basis at the you know use cases that we see Magento being used in and, and I think that's just really testament to you know the strength and flexibility of the platform and then as we're going to talk about you know on the on the live stream you know also just the diversity of clients from a, a sort of vertical perspective um, but but you know we, we see you know very small um, uh, what we sometimes call Soho clients small home office businesses um, who use the platform right up to multi-billion dollar uh, enterprise orgs and, and again you know it's, it's really fascinating to see that you know the platform has that breadth and depth so that's that's a little bit on the elevator pitch I think I think we're at the top four <laughs> yeah and if anyone has any particular questions uh, on this or anything that they want covered in this live stream feel free to post those in the chat if you catch it after it's live post them in the comments of this video and i'll do everything i can to get those answered for you um, i'm going to go through my questions first and then we'll start answering any audience questions again if you happen to catch this on any other platform that this may be embedded in the conversation is going on on youtube youtube dot com forward slash ecommerceaholic join us over there and post your questions uh, so as i mentioned just a few weeks ago we got the announcement of adobe commerce cloud could you maybe kind of you know give us a little bit of an understanding as to what adobe commerce cloud is meant to be Absolutely. So I think, you know, before I, I answer that, I think it's probably, you know, helpful to sort of do set a little bit of, uh, you know, background on, on, on Adobe. So, you know, if we think about Adobe, Adobe is effectively split into sort of three business units. There's the creative cloud and, you know, we all uh, know and love, uh, you know, Photoshop and, and the other products that are part of creative cloud and creative cloud is really there, uh, you know, to help individuals, you know, you know, create, uh, you know, great creative experiences, whether that's, you know, video, Images, uh, you know, audio, etc., um, and that's that's a you know very large uh, established part of the Adobe business. Um, there's then uh, the document cloud, which is you know PDF, uh, Adobe Sign, uh, very much a, 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 a very strategic and growing part of the business. And then there's Experience Cloud, um, and Experience Cloud is where where Magento lives. Um, and Experience Cloud is a suite of uh, you know class leading um, enterprise solutions that are really 
um, there to enable uh, you know enterprise organizations to uh, have highly differentiated um, uh, digital experiences. So. When we look at experience acquired, you know, prior to the Magento acquisition, there are a number of core assets. There's um, uh, Adobe Experience Manager, which is um, an acquisition that uh, Magento made many years ago. Of, uh, sorry, Adobe made many years ago of, uh, of, of Day.com, which was a, a leading CMS uh, platform. And today, uh, you know, AEM is really, you know, the undisputed market leader in, in enterprise CMS. It's used by, uh, you know, you know, thousands of, of large, uh, you know, global enterprise organizations to um, you know, manage and run all of their their digital properties, their mobile site, their 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 desktop sites, and and, and many other uh, you know you know di digital screens that they, uh, they, they 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 operate their digital experience through, and and then there's also um, Adobe Analytics and Adobe Target, uh, which came in through the Omniture acquisition. Uh, so those again are the market leading uh, you know analytics solution and and sort of optimization suite doing A/B testing, personalization, etc. Um, there's Adobe Campaign. Which is a an enterprise, um, you know, email marketing, uh, you know, platform, and and there's there's also you know many, many other parts of the portfolio. The reason all this is important is that you know Adobe has a very large and established um, install base of, of, of enterprise customers. Um, you know, many thousands of them, as well as some you know smaller, what we might call sort of smaller enterprises or large SMB customers as well. Um, that that uh, already own many of these assets. They already own and use uh, uh, Adobe Experience Manager, Adobe Analytics, Adobe Target, um, and and these products all roll up into what we call the uh, Adobe. Experience cloud. Um, uh, now, the um, you know obviously you know the acquisition of Magento brings commerce uh, in, into the equation, and so really what we think of, you know when we think about um, Adobe Commerce Cloud, Adobe Commerce Cloud is really a, a bundling of these solutions, but more than just a bundling, it's really a sort of pre-integrated suite of these solutions where Magento is offered. Uh, and sold with uh, Adobe Experience Manager, with Adobe Analytics, with um, Adobe Target, um, and, and, and with the integration framework that ties all these products together, um, and is offered by Adobe uh, as sort of, uh, you know, as, as a combined integrated offering. And we call this uh, Adobe Commerce Cloud. So at a high level, um, you, you know, that, that's what it is. And I'm sure, uh, TJ, you've, got, you've, you've probably got some questions to, to, you know, to go into a little more detail here. Yeah, we'll definitely go into some technical differences between them, but I want to kind of get the high level business stuff out of the way at, at first. Um, do yeah. you have kind of a profile of a merchant that maybe this offering is aimed at? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, like I said, you know, many of the customers that we're aiming um, this at are already um, Adobe clients, and many of them are, you know, larger um, mid-market or or, or or enterprise clients that already are using um, other products in the Experience Cloud portfolio. They already own and use AEM, Analytics, and Target, uh, and so you know, as, as we think about those clients, you know, their needs for for, for commerce, you know, we're obviously injecting, uh, um, you know, Magento into that, but but you know, when we think about the overall solution suite, we would now, you know, refer to this as uh, uh, Adobe Commerce Cloud. So it's definitely targeted um, at enterprise organizations. You know, these are uh, typically large, uh, you know, multi-hundred million dollar revenue or, or billion dollar revenue clients um, that we already have a strategic relationship with. You know, we refer to these as, uh, as strategic accounts within Adobe. So since you're the strategy guy, is there, you know, any anything in particular you want to share about, you know, how you see the future of e-commerce or is it, you know, just just about Adobe's acquisition that really led to you bringing this uh, this offering to the market? Well, I think, no, it's, it's really fascinating to talk about the figure of e-commerce. I mean, you know, I've been you know, tracking this space for, you know, my whole career. And, um, you know, there, there's, there seems to be sort of no end to the opportunity. In fact, the opportunity seems to be, uh, you know, accelerating. You know, if we think, um, you know, globally, only about 15 to 16 percent of total, uh, you know, retail spend is, is happening online today, which means there's like just, just a, a, a ton of upside. You know, if we look at, um, you know, the innovation that's happening in e-commerce space, you know, we see Amazon continuously disrupting, you know, things like, you know, the announcement last week of uh, uh, offering, um, you know, one-day shipping as part of the uh, you know the prime subscription um you know we see uh spend by these uh you know 
our, our um, collective clients who are investing in e-com platforms, you know, Magento as well as our competitors, that spend is uh, increasing year over year at about, you know, as a, as a you know, 15%, uh, you know, CAGR rate. So, um, you know, when we think about investment budgets from, uh, you know, our potential uh, customers, whether they be, you know, SMB, mid-market or enterprise clients, they are uh, allocating more and more of that budget to, to e-commerce, um, you know, re-platforming, making sure that they're on a, a modern scalable platform like Magento is very much a high priority. So we're, we're in a you know, very good place. Uh, you know, e-commerce continues to grow globally um, and, and we see more and more use cases um, uh, being applied to e-commerce. You know, we, at Magento, we've seen a lot of growth in, in B2B. Um, you know, around about half of our uh, lead volume as well as our deals are with clients who have uh, B2B requirements. And so the, the B2B module that came in uh, Magento Commerce in 2.2 has been you know, hugely successful for us. Um, but also we see, you know, as I alluded to earlier, more, um, more and more, uh, you know, in some cases, kind of almost like so weird uh, scenarios using e-commerce. You know, we see oil and gas firms buying our platform, pharmaceutical uh, companies buying our platform, uh, you know, government agencies buying Magento. Um, so, you know, it, it really is being used in almost every sector. You know, e-commerce is, is completely ubiquitous now. Um, and then we see, you know, a lot of things that in the past we might have said would never be sold online, things like mattresses and cars, um, those high consideration purchases that cost, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars that traditionally we would have um, said could only be sold in a showroom, you know, talking to an experienced, uh, you know, um, sales rep. Now, you know, consumers uh, as well as, you know, B2B buyers completely comfortable making those high consideration purchases entirely through, you know, a, a digital experience. And so all of this is, is, is great news for, for us. It's great news for, you know, anyone in the e-commerce industry because, uh, you know, it really continues to go from growth to growth. Everyone kind of, you know, if you have questions, feel free to post those in the chat. We're going to get to those in just a little while. I'm going to roll through my own questions or those that were submitted ahead of time. Uh, and we'll try to leave some time at the end to make sure we get to your live questions. But feel free to go ahead and post those. No need to hold those back, especially if they talk about uh, something in particular that we're covering at this point. So as far as uh, Adobe Commerce Cloud, as far you know, functionality or technically speaking, how, does, mm -hmm. how is it going to differ from your current Magento offerings? Yeah, so that's a great question. So, you know, if we think about, um, you know, Magento, you, you can kind of think of Magento as sort of a stack. Um, you, you know, obviously there's the open source Magento, um, which, you know, is very much the, you know, the foundation of the platform. Um, and, and that's, you know, freely, you know, publicly available and, you know, Again, you know, very, very popular and, and, and disruptive in the market. Um, Magento Commerce, which you know, in, in the past, you know, we uh, used to be called Enterprise Edition. We, we we named that last year to Magento Commerce. Is uh, you, you know, our, our commercial offering. Um, that is, it's the same code base, um, but we have some additional modules that are that are made available. Uh, and that's you know, Magento Commerce is available either in our in our cloud offering as, as well as on premise. And then Adobe Commerce Cloud, again, like I said, it's this. Um, uh, uh, it's a solution set. Adobe Commerce Cloud is Adobe Experience Manager and Adobe Analytics and Adobe Target um, and Magento Commerce. And so the core product is, is exactly the same. This, we haven't created a, a different version or a different code base. Um, you know, it is uh, Magento Commerce, um, but it's bundled together with these Adobe uh, products and it's integrated with these Adobe products. So, you know, we, we're, we're selling um, a solution set that is um, greater than the sum of just Magento on its own. So in that context, some of these questions may not make exact sense, or they may be answered by that. But a lot of these were submitted to me. So I want to make sure, no, you know, we very, yeah. very explicitly cover some of some of these things. Like, um, yep. you know, one, one thing that was asked a couple of times is with Adobe Commerce Cloud, are you still going to be able to edit the code like you can with Magento? Absolutely. Um, you know, so when you're buying um, Adobe Commerce Cloud, uh, you know, the commerce piece of that is, is just Magento Commerce. Now, it's uh, in that use case when you're buying Adobe Commerce Cloud as an enterprise client, um, you know, most likely you're deploying Magento Commerce in a, in a, in a, in a headless state. Um, you know, the, 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 the GraphQL APIs are connected to what we call the, 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 the commerce integration framework, which is a, a microservices based integration framework that then connects into the, the other 
of our Adobe products into AEM analytics and target. Um, and so, but but it, you know, the, the, at the heart of it, you know, it's still Magento Commerce, and uh, you know, the, um, the the source code uh, is, is is available. It, it has the same extension points. You can still um, you, you know build extensions. You know, take extensions from the the Magento marketplace and install them. Uh, it's no diff. You know, it is Magento Commerce. It's just being uh, delivered uh, in a broader solution set uh, and, and and branded um, as Adobe Commerce Cloud. So there's no no limitations. Um, you know, if you're a system integrator, if you're a merchant, and you're used to working with Magento Commerce, then the Magento Commerce that you're using inside of Adobe Commerce Cloud is is going to be very familiar. It's, it's exactly the same. So as far as uh, Adobe Commerce Cloud, exactly what other Adobe products are going to be included in in that particular system? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, when we sell Adobe, um, uh, you, you know, Commerce Cloud, the, the, the products that are, uh, if you like, part of this bundle that, that are sold together are, are obviously Magento. Um, then there, there's AEM. So, so you know, the, the customers who are buying Adobe Commerce Cloud, most of the time, it's not a hard and fast rule, will be using uh, AEM as the uh, experience delivery, um, uh, you know, tool set. So all of the, uh, the templating, the management of their site, all of the uh, content management tasks work flow approvals, uh, you know, managing the content on the site, they'll do that inside of AEM. So again, you know, Magento typically deployed in a, in a headless fashion where, you know, Magento will be used for managing the product catalog, pricing, offers, promotion, you know, configuration around the taxes, but, you know, you're not going to be doing, um, you know, the, the traditional sort of uh, page templating, uh, you know, inside of Magento. Um, and then, you know, we also, um, you, you know, integrate and bundle in uh, Adobe um, Target, which gives us very sophisticated uh, optimization A-B testing uh, capabilities on the site, um, you know, a lot of personalization capabilities, uh, you know, product recommendations and other things that Target does. And then uh, Adobe Analytics gives us, you know, best in class uh, analytics, really understand the, uh, you know, user behavior on the site. Um, and, and, and all of this sort of, you know, comes together into, into an integrated suite. Um, and then there's sort of optional um, other things that can be sold, uh, you know, um, Magento Order Management is sort of a you know something that we, we commonly uh, you know will sell with Adobe Commerce Cloud, especially clients who have uh, you know complex order fulfillment scenarios. They have multiple um, uh, you know we, um, physical stores. They have you know complex um, you know order fulfillment scenarios that are in drop shipping, etc. Uh, you know things like um, uh, Adobe uh, ca Campaign. Um, you know from an email marketing perspective. So you know there's, there's a whole sort of suite of you know uh, things that can be sold. But most commonly, what we're really looking at with Adobe, uh, you know, Commerce Cloud is, is, is Magento, um, you know, sold and integrated with, with AEM Target and Analytics. So uh, Magento Cloud or Magento Commerce, um, particularly yeah. in the cloud offering, is, is your flagship model. I mean, that's the, you know, that's the fully functional Magento version. Um, is, is there any expectation that this branding of Adobe Commerce Cloud or the Adobe Commerce version of it um, eventually replaces the Magento Commerce Cloud Edition. Um. Highly unlikely. No, I, I, I don't think so, because there, there are different segments of the market. Um, you know, if we think about what we've just been talking about, you know, Adobe Commerce Cloud, which is, you know, this the, the suite of solutions of which, you know, Magento is just one part of the solution. Um, you know, that is that is very much targeted at, at an enterprise audience. You know, it's targeted at, at a large uh, enterprise organization that has, um, you know, a, a well-established, you know, online presence. Um, it's probably doing fairly significant, uh, you know, revenues through their e-commerce site and, and probably has a, a fairly sort of large and complex you know functional operating team of, of marketers merchandisers etc and, and so that enterprise client is, is very much looking for you know an enterprise um, set of capabilities you know uh, workflow approvals making sure that you know they have all the you know the, the governance in place that they need to operate you know what's probably a, a complex you know multi-country multi um, multi-brand uh, multi-product um, you know e-commerce operation now that solution if you try and force that down market into you know a mid-market retailer that is you know doesn't have that sort of operational capacity is a much sort of smaller leaner e-commerce team you know probably has 
far less revenues may only be doing 10 or 50 million online a year. Um, you know, you're, that's that's the wrong you know solution to push that whole solution and try and force that down market. Um, you know, you're 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 really going to sort of uh, you know o- overkill the needs of that market. So Magento Commerce, as we as we know and love it today, is absolutely uh, you know here for the long term. Um, and uh, you know, Magento Commerce as a standalone product offering um, will continue to thrive in in the mid market and SMB um, because it's uh, it's a right fit for for those uh, for those type of clients. So if you have questions, keep them coming. We're getting quite a few in the chat. As I said, I'm going to go through mine. I've got like six more topics we're going to talk about, and then we're going to leave some time at the end to answer uh, as many of your questions as we can possibly answer. So keep posting them. If you happen to be catching this somewhere other than YouTube, that's where the conversation's at. That's where we're taking questions. So go over to uh, youtube.com forward slash e-commerceaholic. If you happen to be new around here, maybe consider giving us a subscribe. We're like 16 subscribers away from a thousand. That would be a nice milestone, a nice round number. Uh, we definitely appreciate the support from all, all of our subscribers. Um, so um, I keep keep posting those questions and we will get around to them shortly. And I'll, I'll mention this several times. I know people come and go. Uh, you know, it's a busy time. It's a busy time of year. We've got Imagine coming up in just about a week now. So um, everybody's scrambling. I understand everybody can't watch the, the whole hour, but this will be available on replay afterwards as well on the YouTube channel. So you can always catch it later, watch it at 2x speed so it doesn't take up the entire hour and you can ask questions there as well if you happen to be catching it in replay and we will get those answered. Um, so this is one question I, a lot of people are always concerned with change and a new edition, a new version is 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 a change. Um, and yeah. so, you know, the, the big question that I got a lot was, you know, are they going to kill open source? Does this, is this have some uh, impact at all on open source? So do you, do you see this you know, having any impact, good or bad, on the open source version of the platform. No, I, 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 th- I think um, you know th- this is going to have no impact on open source. You know, we, we as Magento, as Adobe, are, are fully committed to you know the future of, of open source. It's really you know the the, the DNA of the platform. Um, but the the if we think about you know through the lens of uh, you, you know uh, a buyer, uh, you, you know a merchant who's who's, who's running an e-commerce site, you know they're, they're, the the use case for open source is definitely you know more down market. Um, you know it's it's a phenomenal platform. You know highly uh, you know highly flexible. Um, you know a lot of great capabilities and features in there, which are you know uh, leaps and bounds ahead of some of the other platforms that you know we might compete with at sort of the the SMB or or sort of lower end of the market. So open source, you know, continues to thrive. It continues to do really, really well. Um, but it's definitely targeted at, at sort of the, you know, the smaller, uh, you, you know, home office business or, or smaller SMB business. Um, you know, when we when we go a little more market into a slightly more mature SMB business or a mid market firm, you know, they definitely see the value in Magento Commerce. Um, one because they then have a formal relationship with Magento. Um, you know, from a support perspective. Um, uh, they they have access to you know our cloud environment and all of the sort of the the uh, you know security that comes with that around you know PCI compliance and and, and obviously being able to um, rely on us as, as their vendor for uh, you know for, for for all of the managed hosting cloud scalability uh, you know uptime performance etc. And, and then obviously Magento Commerce comes with a number of features and capabilities that um, uh, you know are appealing to that sort of mid market client that are perhaps not available in the open source version. But then Adobe Commerce Cloud, like I said, it's uh, it's this uh, you know solution suite that uh, includes Magento Commerce, but also brings these other uh, you know enterprise capabilities that Magento does not natively have around enterprise content management, you know A/B testing, analytics, and so forth um, that is targeted at, at, a, at an enterprise client. So you know the the open source um, you know we're fully committed to. It's going to continue to thrive um, and. Uh, you know, but I, but I think you know they're 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 targeted at very different you know ends or spectrums of the market. Adobe Commerce Cloud, you know, targeted at the enterprise market, uh, and open source, you know, serving that that, that smaller merchant. Um, but but again, remember, um, you know, they're they're it is really all part of the same uh, you know code base. So uh, you know, as we make improvements to Magento open source, as we see contributions from the from the community from community engineering, um, all of those uh, you know make their way into into all of the offerings. You know, they make their way into Magento Commerce. They make 
make their way into Adobe Commerce Cloud. So I think there's some fantastic, um, uh, you know, from a scalability perspective, um, you, you know, having this all, you know, being, you know, on the same code base as one common platform, um, you know, really, uh, you know, is beneficial for all. It means that innovations that we're investing in on the Adobe Magento side uh, find their way down into the open source version and contributions we get from the open source community find their way into the uh, the commercial version. So it's, uh, you know, we really see, you know, both offerings supporting each other in the market. So other than our uh, live streams around the acquisition announcement, hosting is always our biggest topic. People love yeah. debating Magento hosting and um, so much so that if I had just named this, how will Adobe Commerce Cloud be hosted? We probably would have doubled the viewership at this point. <laughs> there but, you go. <laughs> Uh, you know, platform.sh and, and the uh, Magento Commerce Cloud version, uh, we could have some interesting debates there. Um, but with this Adobe Commerce Cloud version, will, will it? how will its hosting and infrastructure differ than what you're doing currently with Magento Commerce Cloud? Yeah, it, it, it won't. It's the same offering. Again, remember that... Um, you know, you know, Adobe, Adobe Commerce Cloud is 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 just a solution set of, of integrated solutions that's you know backed and supported by by Adobe. But the the Magento piece of that uh, is, is just Magento Commerce, uh, and and uh, in the same way that today we we will you know we have effectively two deployment models for Magento Commerce. We will sell Magento Commerce uh, as an on-premise license. So clients can take that, um, you know, as traditional sort of deployed software, host it on their own uh, metal and infrastructure if they want to. That's a very uh, unusual use case these days. You know, most often when we're selling an on-premise license, you know, the clients or the, the system integrators are deploying it in the cloud anyway. It gets deployed in AWS or Azure or, or Google or somewhere. Um, but when we're selling Magento Commerce in our cloud environment, environment, um, you know, that's where, you know, we, we kind of have a, a packaged offering. And, and so Magento is offered um, today on, on, on AWS, uh, you know, platform that is H is, you know, we've been, um, you know, transparent about as a, uh, a key strategic partner that provides a lot of the, uh, you know, the, dev, the DevOps and, and sort of CICD tools that, that come with that platform. And there's a lot more that is, um, uh, there's a lot more that's, uh, you know, integrated, uh, you know, in as part of that platform, you know, it's, it's there's all the PC CI and SOX compliance. Uh, you know, we do all of the uh, uh, the monitoring of the environment. We do the you know the scaling of that environment. It's really a sort of soup to nuts managed hosting solution from Magento, and and for, you know. Certainly, for you know many of our clients, that's very very attractive. You know, um, you know we live in a SaaS world. Um, many of our competitors are, or the majority of them, you know, have SaaS offerings, and, and so we need to act and play uh, and, and and be on a level playing field with those SaaS offerings. And that's really what um, you know when we offer Magento Commerce in the cloud is doing. It's giving our clients a singular relationship, a singular contract with Magento that allows them to focus on innovation and. Um, you know, growing their business without having to worry about, uh, you know, hosting, you know, maintenance, um, you know, that that's something that, you know, Magento, uh, you know, takes on uh, the responsibility for as part of the contract. And so that's really exactly the same when we're selling Adobe Commerce Cloud. Um, uh, it just comes with, you know, you know even more, um, you know, oversight from, from Adobe. So it's the same, uh, you know, cloud infrastructure, um, you know, when Magento is running headless as part of this broader solution set inside of uh, Adobe Commerce Cloud. Cloud. It's it's still running on, uh, on on AWS. You know, there's still the same um, cloud management tools that are provided as part of you know our partnership with um, Platform.sh. Um, but it comes with um, some oversight from from Adobe's um, uh, managed services organization, which is a, a you know very um, you know mature um, uh, you know organization that, that's providing um, really sort of uh, you know very close uh, sort of white glove handholding for those enterprise clients. Um, and, and so, you know, as it relates to providing very high uh, SOAs, uh, et cetera, there's just a sort of um, perhaps, a, you know, slightly further level of, of commitment that we go to um, uh, in terms of, you know, just providing those SOAs and support um, when it's Adobe Commerce Cloud. Um, but, but you know, un, under the under the hood, it's the, it's the exact same, uh, you know, infrastructure from a, a hosting management perspective. Well, I did have some questions. The assumption would be that it would be hosted differently. That, that was just an assumption a lot of people had made. So I'm going to rephrase this question a little bit yeah. um, to make it make sense in this context that it's the same. But, uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but Adobe hosts 
their cloud infrastructure in in something different, not AWS. I believe it's Azure or something like that. Um, and and I hate asking you know future kind of kind of questions because I understand these things could change and there's some things you can share and you can't share. But are there any plans or at least anything you can share um, about you know maybe Magento's plan to move that to a system? that maybe Adobe is a little more comfortable with and what they're using for their their other technologies. And again, if you can't answer the question, feel, feel free to deflect, but it was asked no, of me, so I want to make sure I get it in there. No, 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 we're, we're here to be to be transparent. So, and, and hopefully, you know, clear up any confusion. So um, I, I think the first thing is that a number of the, the products, both Magento products as well as Adobe products are, are, are true SaaS multi-tenant products. And so, you know, Magento order management, uh, Magento business intelligence, those are both SaaS products. So they're, 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 they're a little different. You know, they are, uh, you, you know, not only are we, you know, there is, you can't host them yourself. There is no on-premise versions of those. You know, you have to uh, operate them in a multi-tenant SaaS environment, you know, provided by Adobe Magento. And that's the same for, for, for some of the, or many uh, of the majority, actually, of the, the Adobe products. So, um, you, you know, Adobe uh, Analytics, Ad Adobe Target, um, those are all multi-tenant SaaS products as well. Now, uh, AEM, which is the enterprise content management platform that's sold as, as part of the, uh, the solution set of uh, Adobe Commerce Cloud, that is, uh, you know, more of a, or was more of a traditional uh, on-premise product. And again, that can be deployed on premise or uh, in the cloud environment. Now, when it's deployed in a cloud environment, you know, Adobe has a, a managed um, hosting environment for that. They call AMS, Adobe Managed Services, um, and uh, that can be deployed on Azure or um, or AWS, uh, really at the, at the customer's preference. Now, today, Magento Commerce, when we deploy it in our cloud environment, uh, is uh, and has been up until now uh, exclusive to AWS, um, but we are you know, working hard to um, enable uh, Azure um, later in the year. Um, so, you know, you'll see some announcements from us, uh, you know, about that sort of, uh, you know, you know, in the future. Um, but, you know, we're, we're very committed to making sure that um, the Magento Commerce, when it's uh, offered in, in our cloud offering in the future, uh, clients will be able to choose between whether they want that uh, running on AWS or Azure infrastructure. No, I know it's common with acquisitions after they kind of leave things be for about a year and then you start seeing overlapping resources merge together. And we're starting to see that now with the sales resources of Magento and Adobe. Uh, you know, one of the concerns, especially, you know, from an agency perspective is will Magento continue to have dedicated sales resources or is the focus going to be this conglomeration of multiple uh, Adobe products and really selling Adobe Commerce Cloud? No, you, 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 we, so the answer is, you know, yes, the Magento, uh, you know, Salesforce will, will absolutely be, uh, be, you know, it, it's staying, uh, not only is it staying, it, it's growing, um, you know, rapidly. So there, there's really, uh, you know, these little bits of internal speak, internal jargon, but there's really sort of, uh, you know, two sales motions. You, you've got to remember that Adobe is, uh, you know, within the, the Adobe Experience Cloud is this, you know, it's a massive organization and there are, uh, you know, a, a huge sales force that, that number thousands of people, um, you know, globally and, and in every market around the world. And that sales force, uh, you know, has, you know, successfully for years and years been out there, you know, making the Adobe uh, Experience Cloud um, solutions, you know, mark market leaders um, and, and, and have a huge install base of, of, of enterprise and sort of, you know, smaller enterprise clients. And so when we're in a situation where we are dealing with what Adobe would call a, a named account or a strategic account, you know, there's already an, an Adobe seller that has, a, you know, that, that owns that account that has a very deep relationship with the client. The client already owns, uh, you know, probably many um, uh, of the Adobe products. And so, you know, there, if there's a commerce opportunity, you know, we're going to be positioning Adobe Commerce Cloud. We're going to be uh, making sure that that client is successful, um, you know, with the whole integrated suite. Um, and, uh, you know, that sales motion will be less Led by uh, you know the the, the enterprise the, the Adobe seller with with full support from um, uh, 
you know, what we would call uh, a magenta product specialist. Now, um, if we think about sort of an SMB uh, client or, or a mid-market client that, you know, perhaps has no existing relationship with Adobe, doesn't own any of the Adobe Experience Cloud products today, um, and just wants to buy Magento, well, it's, it's business as usual. It's uh, going to be operating exactly as we've operated for, you know, the last, uh, you know, the last 10 years as Magento. You know, we have a dedicated, uh, uh, you know, sales organization that, uh, you know, is focused uh, on that segment of the market where we're selling um, just Magento Commerce. You know, we're not trying to uh, sell Adobe Commerce Cloud there. We're selling Magento Commerce, um, which includes the core commerce platform. Um, you know, we may, it may sell order management in there if it's a fit. You know, certainly we'll, 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 we'll push Magento shipping and, and Magento uh, business intelligence. But we're really focused on selling the, the core Magento Commerce products. And, and that sales uh, organization is, uh, is, is, is alive and well. It's, it's here to stay and, and, and we're growing it rapidly. Uh, you know, one of the great things about an acquisition is um, it, it gives us uh, opportunities to invest in sales and marketing that perhaps you know we we didn't have the you know the same opportunity when we were uh, you know owned by a private equity firms so you know that that channel of, of, of uh, you know the, the sales and marketing organization that is focused on selling um, just magento commerce into you know SMB and mid market accounts you know we're we're growing that rapidly and uh, you know uh, and growing it globally as well that that's now now uh, very much a mature global organization where you know we have sellers uh, in in North America Latin America all over Europe the Middle East uh, you know Asia Pacific um you know so so it's uh yeah it's it's here to stay absolutely all right uh we've i'm down to my last question about uh, adobe commerce cloud i do have a couple of questions uh, that are a little bit out of context that i, I want to ask that were submitted then we're going to get around to viewer submitted questions so go ahead and start piling those in when we run out of questions we're gonna we're gonna call it a day we've been going about 43 minutes now. And again, I know uh, a lot of people are coming and going. I see the viewer count slowly starting to tick up there. So um, we are having this conversation over on YouTube. If you happen to be finding this on another platform, we are only accepting questions in the YouTube comments or chat of this particular video. And if you're new around here and you like this kind of content, uh, consider going ahead and hitting that subscribe button while you're over there on YouTube. You might as well. You know you want to. Um, and if you don't want to, then don't. It's fine. I don't know why you're here watching this if you're not into good e-commerce or Magento content. Uh, but my last question, um, you know, you, we had talked about how uh, Adobe Commerce Cloud is really, uh, you know, kind of Adobe products first, and then they want the Magento e-commerce portion added to that. But on, on kind of reversing that equation, do you have any intention in the short-term future of including other Adobe products into that Magento commerce license. I, I don't know about including um, Adobe products. You know, as I mentioned earlier, many of the, uh, the, the, the Adobe products that are in the uh, Experience Cloud, um, you know, maybe uh, overkill or you know a little too sort of complex for the the needs of uh, you know the traditional Magento commerce buyer. That said, I, I do think there's you know there's certainly a fantastic opportunity for leveraging um, you know some of the technologies that Adobe has, and so you know one of the things that you know we're we're very excited and and you know and, and very much sort of you know active um, you know exploration on is, is how do we um, leverage uh, Adobe's AI and machine learning capabilities. This is uh, you, you know, what, what would the the Adobe Sensei platform, and so how can we make Magento Commerce um, you know more and intelligent leverage machine learning um, across all areas of marketing, merchandising, etc. Um, so that's certainly you know one uh, you know potential area where we would sort of leverage uh, not like I say not. Um, necessarily selling Adobe products into uh, you, you, you know with with Magento Commerce into the mid market, but seeing if there's clever ways in which we can leverage um, uh, you, you know technologies that that, that that Adobe has. So I think you know that's that's uh, you know certainly one area that you know we're very uh, you, you know interested in exploring is, is how can we uh, leverage Sensei to um, in potentially in sort of future you know features and capabilities that we build in Magento Commerce. And TJ, I'm, I'm not hearing you. I don't know if you went on mute there. I muted myself, I guess. I, I, I hit the mute button. Uh, you know, that's one of the problems when people don't realize it. It's uh, It looks nice and calm, but there's about a thousand things going on over here behind the scenes. So sometimes I'll hit that mute button and I'll have things going on. And then 
maybe I forget to, to click it back off. You know, that, that, that happens. But, so I'm back. You can hear me now, right? You know who you're Fantastic. Um, so my, my last two questions here, user submitted questions, a little bit out of context. Um, what's the vision for AEM and Magento as it relates to content management? Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a great question. I think, you know, there's been a lot of questions around, you know, especially, you know, with, with, with uh, page builder coming out in, in, in 2.3.1, you know, what's, you know, when, when, uh, you know, when is page builder appropriate, you know, do I need AEM, does, does AEM, uh, you know, replace page builder, you know, lots, lots of questions around that. And, and so, you know, hopefully try and try and clarify, you know, listen, um, you know, page builder is a, a fantastic tool. Um, you know, we made a, you know, a, an investment there acquiring Bluefruit. We spent, um, the best part of two years since that acquisition, uh, integrating Bluefruit into Magento Commerce, um, you know, making sure it was, you know, uh, you know, tightly uh, integrated and, and, and sort of worthy of being in Magento Commerce. And, and I think, you know, the, the feedback we're getting from, you know, all of the, the customers who are using it and the ecosystem is that it's just a, a game changing tool in terms of, um, you know, creating efficiencies for, you know, managing, uh, you know, content and, and creating content landing pages, et cetera, on a Magento site. So, you know, we're, we're, you know, going to continue to invest in in, in Page Builder. Um, you know, there's, there's certainly a very exciting roadmap for Page Builder, but Page Builder is not a, a content management platform. You know, if you if you did sort of a feature differentiation between what Page Builder does and what AEM does, there's a there's a huge gap. There's, there's, there's a huge gulf. Um, you know, Page Builder is, as the name uh, implies, it is a page builder. It, it allows me um, as a, a merchandiser, as a marketer, to you know build and manage a uh, a landing page. Um, uh, you, you know, and, and to have you know full control over the design and creative of that page, um, you know, WYSIWYG drag and drop, and I, I can launch that page, um, you know, w without any involvement from a developer or any release management processes, which is which is great, and it's game changing for Magento. Um, but it's not a CMS platform. It doesn't have workflow. It doesn't have approvals. It doesn't have you know a lot of the sophisticated uh, you know content management uh, you know tools and capabilities that a large enterprise with a large team of marketers and merchandisers who are responsible for different product lines, who are responsible for different markets, um, all of the governance that needs to go into managing a complex enterprise e-commerce site, you know, that's not what page builders for. And, and so, you know, they serve different markets. Um, you know, when we when we sell Adobe Commerce Cloud into a large enterprise client, absolutely, they're going to have a very very strong or mandated preference for AEM uh, delivering the digital experience and and uh, integrating into Magento in, in a headless fashion with Magento providing you know a, a set of you know commerce services, you know pricing, catalog services, etc. that are then consumed by AEM because they have a, you know complex um, you, you know needs. They they have large you know uh, distributed marketing uh, teams responsible for doing multiple campaigns um, you know at the same time um, you know there's a lot of governance that needs to go into that and AEM is absolutely a fantastic market leading tool for that um, but you know if you're a smaller merchant and you know you, there's only a couple of you doing your, your online marketing uh, you know AEM is overkill you absolutely don't need all those all those tools and, and page builder is going to suffice as a, as a fantastic tool so really, you know they're, they're serving different parts of the market um, and and you know we uh, you know we don't we certainly don't you know envision a future where you know AEM replaces page builder or vice versa last question from me and then we're going to get to the live questions from the audience um, and again this was another one that was submitted I appreciate everyone that submitted questions ahead of time that was definitely helpful um, any plans for a PIM offering an acquisition perhaps yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, PIM is, I think, an increasingly um, important, um, you know, part of the, the the commerce ecosystem. You know, when we think about what's happening in commerce, I mentioned it earlier. You know, more and more, um, you know, brands selling, you know, very high consideration purchases online. You know, product content is is, is really really critical, um, and you know. CMS platforms like AEM are great at managing unstructured content, you know, marketing landing pages, etc. But they're they were never really designed as PIMs. You know, they're not they're designed to manage a large structured product catalog with hundreds of thousands of SKUs and relationships between those SKUs and product attributes and so forth. So 
you know, absolutely. PIM, I think, is, you know, a, a very, very uh, important part of the overall sort of, you know, commerce um, uh, portfolio today. Uh, and, and you know, we, we've got some great, um, you know, strategic partnerships. As, as, you know, we, we um, uh, announced last year, you know, we have a, a, a premium partnership with Akineo that's, that's very, very strategic to us. You know, we have a lot of joint customers, um, a lot of the, as, as you know, you know they're, they're, they're both PHP-based applications. Uh, they have a lot in common. Um, uh, they both have an open source version. So, uh, you know, we see a lot of our clients um, using uh, Akineo with, um, uh, you know, with uh, Magento. You know, we have other partnerships, uh, you know, with other PIM vendors. Um, and, you know, as, as always, which is critical to, you know, Magento, we're, we're always a, a, an open ecosystem. So, you know, even if we don't have a formal partnership, you know, there are extensions and marketplace that integrate Magento with most of the, you know, the leading, uh, you know, PIM platforms out there. So, um, you know, I, I think, um, you know, for us, um, very much, you know, PIM is a, an important part, but, uh, you know, I think we've, um, you know, we've been very successful in the market market with, uh, you know, the partnerships and integrations that we have with the uh, established PIM vendors that, uh, that are out there. All right, last time, I'm going to get all self-promotional. We are now to your questions um, so if you've got a, if, if you're on another platform, if you're not on YouTube and you're watching this live stream, you've still got 10 or 15 minutes to make your way over, at least to make your way over to YouTube to get your questions in and we will try to get them answered. I'm just going to kind of rewind back to the start of the live stream in the comments. I've got all of the questions queued up here. Uh, and so we will try to go through those uh, as, as well as we can. And if in any of these questions, if we don't answer your question or if it's not clear enough or we misunderstand, please feel free to correct us and we'll do the best we can to make sure we get you an answer. If you happen to be watching this and it's not live, then feel free to post in the comments of the video and I will reply. Uh, I'll reach out to Magento. I'll reach out to Peter. I will get you an answer on any of your questions. So first question from uh, Natalie Morrow. Natalie, thank you for your question. And Natalie's question was, are you going to have LTS version like Ubuntu or Red Hat? And, and for those that maybe don't know, um, you know, just we, we always like to define acronyms because there's so many of them in this industry. Um, I'm assuming by LTS, you mean long term support to where, you know, a customer can pay for support for a version uh, a lot longer than maybe uh, somebody would would normally support it. Any any concept or any thoughts around an LTS version of Magento? Yeah, I, I mean, um, you know, with if we think about current current state, you know, Magento to, um, you know, if you're buying, obviously, you know, open source is, is unsupported. Uh, you know, there, there's no mechanism for a client there to submit a support ticket or get direct support from Magento or Adobe. Although, obviously, there is, you know, great support network in in terms of, you know, the the open source community. Um, if we think about Magento Commerce, that is one of the key value props um, of, of, you know, uh, having uh, a Magento Commerce, uh, you know, relationship is that you. you you have you know that direct relationship with Magento. You know you have uh, an account manager. You have a technical account manager. You have um, access to our support organization. You can submit support tickets, etc. So that is one of the, the differentiators. Um, now we, we have formal um, sort of uh, life uh, you know life life policies. They're they're online. You can, you know, see what they are um, for each of the versions so you know we we you know as with any software company you know it's very hard for us to continually support every single version in fact you know what we're really trying to do um, is, is get as many of our customers on the latest version of Magento as quickly as possible so each time we do a release whether that's a minor release or a major release going from 2.2 to 2.3 or 2.3 to 2.3.1 you know we're doing everything we can to encourage the install base of clients to stay current and to upgrade um, you know as, as, as quickly as, as, as they can. I think it's beneficial for us, it's beneficial for the merchants and the, the whole ecosystem to, to, to move everyone forward at, at as fast a pace as possible. Now, we're not a SaaS platform. You know, we don't force or mandate those upgrades onto our clients. Um, but, uh, you know, I think we've made huge strides with the Magento 2 architecture, uh, as well as, you know, with our cloud offering, that, that upgrades on Magento are... Um, just you know, more of the magnitude, more uh, efficient, easier to do, and quicker today um, than they ever were in the past. So, and when we're seeing this in the numbers, you know, if we look at um, just how when we launch a new version of Magento, how quickly uh, our install base of Magento Commerce clients, uh, as well as the open source, you know, upgrade to that latest version, uh, it, it's 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 it's, a, it's, a really, it's really fantastic. You know, we're seeing great early adoption of those uh, those new versions. 
So I think on Magento 2, that, that sort of answered the question. On Magento 1, obviously, we've got end of life, uh, you know, coming up uh, in uh, uh, June of next year. Um, you know, this, you know, Magento 1 is uh, getting long in the tooth now. You know, it's, um, you know, Magento 2 was launched uh, in November 2015. Um, and since then, you know, we've made no, um, you know, feature uh, investments in Magento 1. Obviously, it's, it has been supported with, uh, you, you know, bug fixes, security patches and so forth. But um, you know, it uh, you know, it, 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 its time is certainly coming uh, you know near an end. So you know, formal um, support for Magento One will will cease for Magento in, in June of next year. Um, and and uh, you know, there there's certainly. Um, you know, clients who will, uh, you know, probably stay on that platform beyond that date. And, and there, you know, there are mechanisms for getting support from, from third parties. Um, but, you know, the, the, the time is certainly, you know, coming, uh, you, you know, coming upon us where, um, you know, we, we, we can't continue to support Magento One, uh, uh, you, you, you know, in, 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 uh, you know for, for an infinite period of time. So the next question we have here is from David Cy Detner. Cy, thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you uh, in, a, in a week at Imagine. We'll have to get together and have a few drinks or catch lunch or something. I'll be around on Saturday, so just ping me. I think you mentioned that you were going to be there early as well. But uh, Cy's question was that you implied Adobe CC, uh, Commerce Cloud, not Creative Cloud, would be focused more on existing Adobe strategic clients. Uh, and so what are their typical e-commerce solutions right now? Just kind of curious as to what the competitive landscape is in that niche. Well, I think, you know, the vast majority of them um, don't have an e-commerce solution today. And this is what's really exciting. There's a lot of greenfield opportunity, a lot of, uh, you know, customers that, you know, especially in B2B verticals, um, you know, emerging industries that are, you know, introducing e-commerce for the first time um, that, you know, it's not like we're replacing a hybris or Salesforce or an old legacy implementation of IBM or, or Oracle. You know, these are net new opportunities, but they're, they're already strategic uh, account with Adobe because, you know, they're already using AEM or they're already using analytics or campaign or target. And so, you know, Adobe already has a relationship and, and, and it's a case of sort of, you know, upselling them uh, into Magento. So I'd say that's the, you know, the, the, the bulk of the opportunity is, you know, there, there's a lot of opportunity out there, net new first time enterprise commerce projects. Um, but, but, you know, obviously there are times when, you know, uh, we're replacing legacy solutions. There's a lot of opportunity in the market right now to, uh, you know, replace um, uh, legacy versions of, you know, the on-premise uh, Oracle APG and IBM WebSphere products. And, and we certainly see uh, migrations away from from Hybris and, and Salesforce uh, over to Magento. So, you know, those are the, in the enterprise space, those are, those are sort of the, certainly the competitive field set. I've got a clarification from Natalie on her question about LTS. You know, it's, mm -hmm. she, it's really about dropping support every two to three years. So, uh, you know, what what thought process goes into how long you're you're going to support a particular release of Magento? Like, does it make sense to support an e-commerce platform, a specific individual release of an e-commerce platform for that long into the future? Yeah, I, I mean. Um... You know, hopefully over time as, as uh, you know upgrades become easier and easier on Magento 2 and, and we see you know clients just always upgrading on a very sort of regular cadence to the latest version you know we'd, we'd love to be in a position to reduce those support times I mean obviously there you know there's an overhead for our organization of uh, you know supporting multiple versions uh, and you know um, but at the same time you know we, we, we have to be you know conscious that there are you know so many of our clients that are aren't uh, in a position to do upgrades as regularly as others. And so, you know, the two to three year policy, and, and, and I think you can see, you know, on, in, uh, you know, online with the policies, it is a little bit different, for, you know, across each version. Um, you know, that's, I, I think that's, you know, something that we, you know, you, you know, we, we try and sort of strive and find the right middle ground, um, you, you know, between, you know, that sort of infinite support, which really, you know, isn't, uh, you know, viable from a, you know, cost perspective, and, you know, but at the same time, we, we have to be conscious not to make those support periods too short, um, you know, because you know, not every client is in a position to, uh, uh, you know, to be constantly upgrading. You're on mute again, TJ. <laughs> Dead gummit. I keep forgetting that mute button. Uh, Brendan's question here kind of cuts deep. I, I get this one. Developers really like the way they've been doing things. They hate change. 
Um, yep. I'm sure IT administrators are the same way. So Brendan's question is, um, and this applies to Adobe Commerce Cloud and uh, Magento Commerce Cloud, but how do you respond to an IT administrator that is afraid of losing control of their infrastructure? Yeah, it's a great question. I, I mean, um, I, I think the first thing, if we if we think about you know our cloud offering today, um, you know, and and when we you know when we sell Magento Commerce on on, on our cloud, you know. We, most of you know the, the clients that are buying this. You know, if they're not buying Magento, they're they're buying a SaaS platform. Whether it's uh, you know Shopify, or BigCommerce, and within the space, or whether it's you know Salesforce, uh, uh, you know, in sort of more of the mid-market enterprise. So you know, we're competing with with um, you know SaaS vendors where IT administrators have very little control or or you know very little involvement. Period. Um, and so you know, Magento certainly offers you know a distinct uh, differentiation and advantage over you know going with a multi-tenant SaaS platform um you, you know and, and and many of our clients uh you know certainly on the business side of the house you know they they want that model they want a model where you know they're not awake at night worrying about you know uptime security infrastructure they want the vendor to be responsible for that and so that's a big part of why we have uh you know cloud offering in the market um but to answer, answer the question around you know the concerns of an it administrator sort of losing control I, I think you know there's there's a lot of control that you have in, in the cloud environment um you, you know there's uh, uh you know there's a whole administrative um you know set of tools that you know give you control over all of your ci cd uh, processes you know working integrating with github you know, doing your deployments, managing all your different environments. Um, you know, a lot of the configuration aspects are, you know, configurable with our cloud environment. Is it different, perhaps, from what you've been used to? If you, you know, if you if you were doing, you know, everything in house, yeah, it is. But I think it's it, it's not fundamentally different. And and so, you know, I think what we found with a lot of our system integrators is at first a little bit of hesitation around our cloud environment. It's different from what they know. But once they've done, you know, one or two projects, they get to learn how it works. You know, usually um, it's like anything. You know, once you, you you kind of adapt to that change, and 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 you know the uh, the system integrators, um, you know, for the most part, you know, within our ecosystem have you know shifted over to to doing um majority cloud projects on the gentle cloud and uh you know there's this continuous improvements we can we, we, we we're making to the platform to make it more accessible and to give um those it administrators more control but but uh, i think generally you know we've seen um it's kind of one of those things you're a little bit hesitant at first but once you get used to it it's like actually this is this is a great uh, you know great system great platform so um i, I think it's more about adapting to that change than uh, that there really being any sort of huge fundamental differences. So we've got another question here from David, and this one may have came before we kind of touched on this, you know, so one of the dangers of going back to the beginning and, and answering yeah, questions, yeah. but he's got a little bit of a twist here. I want to make sure we clarify on it. And his question mm -hmm. was, uh, in, in terms of, you know, hosting the platform, you know, we, we mentioned that Adobe Commerce Cloud pretty much is Magento Commerce Cloud with some other Adobe products added on top of it. Uh, but is it 100% the same, even down to how you support it? Um, good question. So you know, remember that again, Adobe uh, Commerce Cloud is a portfolio of solutions of which you know, Magento is just one part of a broader solution set. So, you know, Adobe has very uh, established existing, you know, mechanisms and processes for how they support the other pieces of the puzzle, or, you know, how they support AEM, how they support analytics and target, and, and all of that, you know, is is, is, is well established. Uh, in terms of the support processes for Magento, um, yeah, it's it's very, very similar to, uh, you know, to, to, to supporting Magento, whether it's part of Adobe Commerce Cloud or whether it's part of uh, you know, the cloud offering when Magento is sold standalone. Um, so those processes are, are, are very, very similar. Like I alluded to earlier, there's just a little bit of sort of extra um, handholding, sort of a white glove service that comes with, uh, with Adobe Commerce Cloud. Sai has another question here, uh, and this one's interesting as well. Uh, Karen Baker had mentioned the other day, you know, we, we all went to Adobe Summit and that's a very different conference than Imagine. Like it's just not a lot of the, the conversations, the people there, there's not a ton of e-commerce experience or sophistication with the people that were attending that conference. They, they may be marketers, they, you know, they may be, uh, you know, corporate, 
but it's not necessarily an e-commerce crowd. So size question kind of touches on that in that how do you how do you figure we'll you know integrate the Magento partners or the greater community into the Adobe ecosystem uh, in order to bring their expertise to bear on Adobe Commerce clients? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. So I think we, you know what we've seen is many you know as you know we've got you know three hundred and fifty plus uh, you know formal uh, you know partners and and, and a long tail of many others you know that, that you know. That, do, do magenta work and um you know many of the these partners especially the larger ones you know have been very very you know excited and keen to um sort of expand their horizons into the uh adobe suite so you know, we've seen a lot of our partners that for years have you know primarily focused on on just doing magenta now uh you know actively engaging in the and the adobe uh, partnership program starting to gain expertise in uh, in adobe analytics target aem and sort of expanding their portfolio and, and really allowing them in some ways to um, start going a little more up market and, and start maybe taking on some slightly larger, more complex commerce projects than, than perhaps they would have been comfortable doing before. So, you know, I think we've seen that aspect to it. Uh, and then as a sort of the flip side of the coin, there's a lot of Adobe, um, uh, you know, partners out there that, you know, perhaps either have no e-commerce domain expertise or experience at all, or, or perhaps, you know, in the past have worked with other competitive platforms and don't have magenta knowledge. And, you know, they're seeing demand already, you know, uh, and significant demand from their, you know, uh, clients and prospects uh, to to do Magento, and so there's a lot of interest from from those partners on, you know, how do we uh, bring Magento expertise into our organizations? You know, how do we hire PHP developers? You know, what are some of the uh, existing Magento partners that we can partner with that we can sub work to, etc. So there's a lot of that going on. So I think on both sides, there's a real openness and willingness, and more, more so than that, there's, there's, a, there's a real appetite for Magento partners to learn about the Adobe products and for Adobe partners to learn about Magento. All right, we're getting down to the last uh, couple or few questions here, and then we're going to call it a day. I, I appreciate Peter sticking around a little extra time here to make sure we get these answered. Uh, Quentin has a very interesting question. Quentin, thanks for watching. Definitely look forward to seeing you in a week. Uh, what do you find a bigger threat to Adobe um, Commerce Cloud? Another SaaS e-commerce platform or an open source one? It's a, it's a good question. Um, you know, so if we're talking specifically about a, Adobe Commerce Cloud for a moment, you know, let's remember that the target market for that is, is, is an enterprise organization. And, you know, generally speaking, um, you, you know, I don't think open source is uh, a huge threat there. It, you know, we don't see many large enterprises, you know, deploying the open source version of Magento, you know, at a large enterprises, you know, real, uh, you know, requirements within procurement, within, you know, corporate governance, et cetera, to, you know, have a direct relationship with the vendor to have support. Um, and, and so, you know, it's very unusual um, you know, to see a large enterprise, you know, using uh, uh, the open source version in, a, in an unsupported fashion. Um, so I think the bigger for it's certainly, you know, from, uh, you know, SaaS competitors, uh, you know, like I said, you know, the, the competitive suite, you know, at the enterprise today is primarily, uh, you know, SAP and, and Salesforce and, uh, you know, Salesforce is obviously a, a SaaS platform I and mean, you know, Hybris SAP is not, it's a very similar nature to, to Magento, it's a, a single tenant application that, that can and is commonly deployed in the cloud. So, um, I, you know, I think, uh, uh, you know, the competitive, you know, it is a competitive market, um, you know, there's pros and cons of, of multi-tenant SaaS, um, but it's certainly at the enterprise level, I, I think, you know, um, enterprise uh, or, or multi-tenant SaaS, at least for e-com, it's, it's different in, in sort of each software application category, but for e-com, um, you know, given the level of customization that needs to occur, the fact that clients want to create very differentiated digital experiences, um, you know, multi-tenant SaaS is not always the, the right answer and, and, and a lot of clients do gravitate to uh, solutions like Magento because of the flexibility, because it's, uh, it's actually a single tenant application. Another question here from Sai. Any comments about the upgrade path for enterprise customers on Magento Commerce who may want to move to a, a broader Adobe ecosystem? Like, is there anything required to start adding that additional Do Adobe capabilities outside of, you know, signing up for a license? Is, is there a migration of some sorts? Yeah, it, you know, it depends. I mean, I think if you're a Magento Commerce client today and you're just using Magento Commerce and, uh, you know, you're interested in sort of, uh, you know, kind of 
taking it to the next level and, and, and start doing A-B testing, uh, you know, then yeah, of course you can, um, you know, acquire a, a license of, of, of Adobe Target. Um, and, and we have this new um, uh, integration uh, framework called Adobe Launch, which is a, a tagging framework that's now, um, you know, supported by Magento. It actually makes that integration into Target and Analytics very simple for an existing uh, Magento merchant. So I think, you know, we're already seeing this, you know, we're seeing some of our clients start to, you know, ask about and adopt certainly Adobe uh, Target and Adobe Analytics analytics because you know it really gives them a lot of powerful insights into how their um, site's performing and allows them to optimize their existing Magento site. Um, I, I think if you know the, the other flip side of that where there certainly is more of an upgrade is is you know a client that's using Magento today that that you know is perhaps growing and and and, and you know has um, you know genuine uh, interest and in, in needs and sort of the, the requirements around AEM uh, and looking to bring in more of that enterprise content management capability that that's certainly a little bit more of an upgrade path because you know you're then looking at really sort of changing your deployment of Magento from being uh, Magento is, is, is hosting the digital experience to sort of scaling that back and saying, well, you know, Magento will become just headless and we're going to use a, a you know, AEM um, for, for delivering the experience. And, and that's certainly a bigger project. So I think it depends, but uh, certainly in terms of embracing um, Adobe Target and Adobe Analytics, there's a very easy, uh, so, you know, sort of upward um, uh, or, 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 or simple uh, path for adopting those products. Okay, down to the last few here. This is not exactly, I mean, there's some questions in here, but uh, Samuel Bar, Samuel, thanks for watching. I appreciate you participating in the uh, live stream and I appreciate your question. Samuel's question is, I'd love to see Adobe do something to target the smaller guys. Uh, maybe a version of Magento I can pay for features that come with support and hosting, um, or do they prefer as a small merchant uh, you know, we go to to a uh, another platform. Obviously, Magento wants to compete on on both ends of the market. So, yeah. are there any plans or thoughts around how Magento can be more friendly for smaller merchants? Yeah, I, th I think there's a lot of the you know the debate here is this our definition of well, what's a small merchant. Um, you know, if we think about uh, you know Magento today, whether you're this is on Magento Commerce today, whether you decide to deploy it on premise or you decide to take our cloud, yeah, actually has a very sort of economical um, uh, you know pr uh, starting price point that's absolutely uh, you know benchmarked against and on par with a Shopify Plus. So you know there's you know certainly you know Magento Commerce you know fully hosted in our cloud and environment uh, is exactly the start the same starting price point as, uh, as, as Shopify plus and, and, and to the, you know by similar price point to big commerce so you know if you're looking at those solutions um, you know Magento is is you know we're on a level playing field you know when it comes to price you know that you're not going to save any money by going with, with a Shopify or big commerce um, you whereas you're going to get you know considerable more functionality capabilities and scalability with Magento now you know, obviously, however, there are cheaper versions of, of platforms like Shopify, um, you know, which start at, uh, you know, much more, you know, low, lower price point that are intended really for, you know, small, uh, you know, very small merchants. And and there the price point of Magento Commerce, you know, can often be, uh, you know, out of reach. And, and that's really where I think open source serves that market. So, um, you, you know, never say never. I mean, I think, um, you, you know, that market for us of, of, you know, the SMB, which we sort of define of merchants doing between sort of one and 10 million online you know that that's still very much our bread and butter and, and not only that it's it's a, it's a thriving market for us we're doing incredibly well there um you, you know sort of uh, anyone that's sort of you know predicting the death of magento um because shopify is you know you know coming in uh, you, you know shopify is doing very well in the market but so is magento you know we're, we're growing fantastically in that segment so um uh, you know i think you know is there an opportunity for magento to go lower down market with a sort of lower entry price point, um, you know, perhaps, but, but, you know, that market is well served by the open source version today. All right. Last question we're going to get to here. Uh, and this is again from Samuel. Samuel, thank you for your questions. Uh, Samuel basically asked, would page builder ever come to open source? And I know there was some discussion at one point about offering page builder as a paid module for open source. I've also heard, some conversation around formalizing the process by which features trickle down to the open source platform. Uh, anything yeah. in particular you want to share about that? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it, 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 you know, there's, there's it, it's certainly a difficult um, sort of juggling game for us. Um, you, you know, and, 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 you know, we, we are a commercial company. Um, 
you know, we, we have to generate revenue through through the license sales of Magento Commerce. And, and, you know, that goes back into the investment of the, in the product and allows us to invest in features like Page Builder and, uh, you know, the Amazon sales channels and, and all the, you know, PWA Studio. I mean, you know, these are all, you know, have been significant investments that we've made in the platform. And so, you know, it is important for us to continue to have, uh, you know, differentiation between open source and Magento Commerce and, and, and you know, to have that feature differentiation. Um, and, and, you know, if we think about that feature differentiation today, it, it's page builder, it's, it's staging preview, um, it's the availability of our, our cloud environment, it's the uh, uh, the, the access to, to, you know, to the, the Magento support organization, and, and then it has many more features. Um, so, you know, it is important for us to, re to retain that. Um, you, you know, we, we, we want to continue to have a very healthy, um, you know, license sales at Magento Commerce because that, you know, feeds back into the investments we make uh, into the overall platform. Now, sometimes with things like Page Builder, um, you know, the, that doesn't necessarily trickle down into open source right away. Um, you know, we, uh, you know, for now, um, you know, Page Builder is certainly a, an exclusive um, capability of Magento Commerce. It's not available in open source. Um, May we change that decision in the future? Um, you know, certainly, uh, you know, perhaps that, that that's something that we could consider. But for now, uh, you know, Page Builder is, um, you know, a very important differentiation for us between open source and the general commerce. All right, we've got a couple of comments here. We've got uh, one from Wayne Croth. Wayne, thanks for joining. I see you join late, but you know, some of us have to work for a living. So I understand that completely, and uh, we'll, uh, Wayne, Wayne mentions, look forward to catching up at Imagine. Uh, definitely look forward to seeing you there, Wayne. I'm not sure what my schedule's going to be like with the Adobe Insider and Magento Master stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm not really in control of my schedule. Plus, we have a booth where we're exhibiting. We're going to be giving away some of these awesome cars. We've got a lot of swag, stickers that I've got on my laptop here, all sorts of crazy stuff we're going to be giving away. Be sure to stop by the booth. You might want to do it day one if you want to get a car i've got a bunch of them but i'm expecting them to go uh very quickly i know we've got at least one question in the chat that we're not going to get to we're already 25 percent over our allotted time i apologize um if you want to you know if you really want an answer on that let me know and i will get you that answer but i'm going to reiterate what uh Cy says here in the chat and uh he says he appreciates how open uh you've been peter and very nice to have some good explanations. Uh, and I, I always appreciate Magento's openness. You know, the whole point of these live streams, you know, the way we started these was to try to give a way of just having a conversation, a non-technical conversation in, in any way we can around some of the things that matter to the Magento community. And, and uh, you know, Magento and now Adobe has been very open in coming on when there are things to talk about. Uh, and, and it's uh, you know great to have you on. Uh, I appreciate your time, even though we did run long. And I'll I'll leave you with the final word. Is there anything in particular? You know, maybe um, how people can get in touch with you if they have additional questions or any anything in particular you want to give to the folks who are watching at home. No, I mean, I think, you know, from, from my perspective, you know, thanks for, for having me. It's been been great. Uh, I mean, you know, listen, we, we really relish the opportunity to, uh, you know, participate in, in, in these type of conversations. Uh, you know, to your point, TJ, you know, you know, change is not always comfortable. And, uh, you know, when we go about, you know, announcing a whole new product like uh, Adobe Commerce Cloud, you know, of course, that, you know, creates a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uncertainty in, inside of the community. Um, so, you know, it, and, 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 you know, there, there's often a lot of sort of mis mis misconceptions and uh, you know people don't really understand you know what, what we're doing or why we're doing it so I uh, know really excited that I was able to come on here today and hopefully you know clear up a few of those misconceptions and provide a little bit of clarity around the strategy and what we're doing and uh, um, and of course we're only a week, a week away from Imagine so super excited to see everyone there and uh, yeah you know you'll hear a lot more from us there and, and you know obviously it's such a you know best opportunity in the year to, to get to you know know what we're up to so uh, hopefully this gave some people um, you know a little bit of uh, kind of a clear understanding coming into Imagine, but uh, if you have you know more questions, um, I'll be around at Imagine as will the whole the rest of the uh, Magento Adobe team, and and you can find me online. Uh, you know, Twitter is probably the best way to get hold of me, uh, Peter underscore Sheldon. So uh, you know, keep the questions coming, and um, you know, please as always let us know if if we're not being open, transparent, if there's confusion around what we're doing. Uh, you know, we want to try and clear that up. So TJ, thanks for for having me on today. We, we've got one one thing we've got to settle uh, debate in the chat right now. Scottish okay. or Irish? 
Oh, Scottish, yeah. So um, I, I, born in Glasgow. Um, my accent is a, a little uh, weird these days because I've lived over in Canada for the last 15 years and I spend most of my time working with Americans. So I've got this kind of slightly, uh, slightly screwed up sort of Scottish Canadian accent, which I know originally from Scotland. See, we, we get you answers. You have questions, we have answers. And I, nobody even noticed that my the stem on my uh, thing here is green, so like it's it's completely see-through here. Um, nobody even noticed in the chat all day. It's a problem of green screening out the background. Uh, but as always, I appreciate everybody watching. If you're new around here, hit that subscribe button. We're getting pretty close to 1,000. Um, I'm not sure if we'll live stream next Friday. We may, we may not. But we've got an event Sunday night after Pre-Imagine uh, that Mage Mojo is hosting. I'm not sure if or how much I can say about it at this point, uh, but it looks to be very, very interesting. I don't know exactly what time we'll go live, but keep an eye out for that. Um, we'll post an actual event as soon as I know what time we're going to go live. Uh, and as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Let's see if I can get this ending to play. Look, the ending played first click that time. That is fantastic. See y'all later.